Good morning. Today I'd like to cover some uh, software, do a tutorial on some software that we uh, have been utilizing. Uh, this is the Xerus Wi-Fi Inspector. It's freeware available from Xerus Wi-Fi Networks. Uh, and all in all, it's, it's pretty good software. Uh, it can be difficult to gather information regarding our Wi-Fi networks to properly troubleshoot them. Uh, we often find ourselves having to utilize various applications within Windows or even using command line syntax to gather this information. The Xerus Wi-Fi Inspector compiles all of this data into a single graphical user interface that is easy to read and easy to understand. To start out with, we'll start out with the application headers. Uh, in this case, we're going to start with layout and click on radar. And what the radar does, and as you can see, I've already got it up here. Um, it actually shows you in a, in a radar graphical interface that uh, all the different uh, Wi-Fi access points or Wi-Fi routers that are available to you to connect to. Uh, in, the, in the graphic here, you can see the one I'm connected to is Pornhub. It's illustrated in orange. All the rest that are available are in white. Um, and as you can see, they just all those other ones dropped off. And, that's, and I'll get into that as to why it does that later on. Um, you'll have to forgive the name. That was, uh, that was just a funny name that I had established when I initially set up my wireless router and it kind of stuck and I've always kept it there. So, all right. Uh, the only issue I have with the radar, uh, pain is the, is the, it, it's gimmicky. Uh, the, my Wi-Fi router is not in any relation to, uh, it's not proportional to where it is according to this radar. Uh, the center being my laptop that I'm running the software from and in relation to where my Wi-Fi uh, access point is at. So it's, it's rather gimmicky and kind of kind of quirky, but uh, it looks cool. So I understand why they put it on there. Next, we go to networks pane. OK, so here's where I'm going to explain why there's only one network showing now when there was more network showing earlier. OK, in the networks pane, what it does is it's pulling data from your your Wi-Fi NIC your Wi-Fi network interface card. In Windows, what it does is, uh, in its power management software, it shuts off uh, the ability of your NIC, and in order to save power, it shuts off your ability to maintain uh, the polling between other Wi-Fi devices that it can talk to uh, that are available. Uh, rather than maintain that connection, it shuts them off to help save power. And I'll show you what, that, what I mean. So if you go down to, when you, when you, if you click on your, your, your Wi-Fi, uh, connection on the in your systems tray. Um, now it'll bring up all of your all of the available uh, networks, Wi-Fi networks that are out there. As soon as that does that, Wi-Fi Inspector will then populate the networks pane because now it's pulling that data from Windows, and Windows has turned on your NIC to full power and is now pulling these different uh, Wi-Fi access points and your uh, different Wi-Fi routers, different networks that are available out there. So uh, and uh, so that that's one thing to remember if you're if you're troubleshooting and you can't and you don't necessarily see a particular SSID that you know is out there that you want that you want to try to connect to, um, make sure that you bring that up out of the systems tray so that it repopulates the networks pane. All right, within the networks pane, we've got uh, obviously we have our SSID. That's the broadcast ID of uh, every wireless network that is within range of your of your PC. We have our different signal levels. Anything. Uh, that is uh, above 50, so negative 50 and higher, uh, is typically considered to be a decent connection. Uh, our different Wi-Fi modes, uh, as you can see, most of them here are predominantly 802.11n. Uh, the securities, uh, these two non-broadcast uh, Wi-Fi networks, I don't even know where they are or what they're where they're at, uh, but their security is wide open. Um, so I definitely would not want to connect to those. Uh, the, other, the other devices all have WPA2 and pre-shared key uh, uh, security on them. So they're pretty solid. Um, this uh, Pornhub AP, it's a Western Digital. That is actually a Western Digital wireless router that I have upstairs in the house that I use for coverage upstairs. Uh, the only difference is I have it configured as an access point rather than a router. Uh, my current router that I'm connected to right now, which is highlighted in orange here, that is an Asus. Uh, for some reason, it, it's not broadcasting its, its vendor ID. And then, of course, over here we have our, uh, our uh, the MAC address. 
of the different devices that are out there. And we have the channels that we're using. Uh, in this case, there you go, see it just dropped off again. So that means that Windows has shut down the power to reduce the power usage of my NIC and dropped off those channels that it's not connected to, or the network that it's not connected to. Uh, as you can see, the channels here are six and 10 that I'm currently using. I'm probably gonna uh, remote into my wireless router and change that to 11 to prevent any, uh, six and 11 to prevent any channel over, override of each other. So it reduces my attenuation. And then, of course, uh, it's in the frequency range of 2.4 gigahertz. If, it was, uh, if I was connected to the 5G, if this was 5G over here, it would be shown in, in the range of the 5 gigahertz range. And it's, it's picking it up as an access point. And then the graphical check mark here for graph, what that does is it allows uh, that particular network to graph in the history pane, which I'll cover next. So, yeah, so the history pane is really useful. It's very useful in the way that uh, it shows you a history of your attenuation uh, based on different uh, environments and circumstances and that sort of thing. So this is great if you're trying to figure out the best way to set up your wireless network. Uh, you can turn on your history and you can walk a distance away from your Wi-Fi. You can walk closer. You can uh, see how different furniture affects the Wi-Fi signal, walls, that sort of thing, uh, solid objects. And it gives you a, an idea of where you're going to uh, pick up your best uh, your your best signal strength. Also, you know, it's a it's, it's also a good opportunity to turn on other uh, electronic devices to figure out it has if it's going to have an impact on your signal strength. And it gives you a nice graphical interface of your of your uh, signal strength and over a time period. And then of course, uh, history of networks. Uh, basically, this all this does is allow two frames to be shown, uh, both your networks frame and your history frame, which we've already covered. Um, and then of course, my favorite. And this is the way I can I operate this software on the regular is the show all pane. The show all pane is nice because it incorporates all the panes that I already discovered, the radar or discussed the radar, the networks and the signal history, but it also brings up this connection pane. And this connection pane is really useful because it, it displays a very a very good synopsis of, of your connection. It provides your wireless uh, adapter that's in your in your device. <laughs> Of course, your SSID, the MAC address of your SSID of the of the wireless access point that you're getting into, what channels you're using, your signal level, and then the mode, uh, your 802.11n. The addresses that are listed here are the addresses that are internal to you. So in here, uh, that's the MAC address of the device running the software. In this case, my laptop. This is the IP address of my laptop. This dot 151, as you can see, based on the 192.168. This is these are private IPs. Then uh, the DNS and gateway IPs, uh, that's basically the IP address of my router. So my router has a, a domain name server, and, and it also is my gateway to the internet. Then right here, my external IP is actually the public-facing IP that my ISP provides to me uh, through, you know, uh, public, my, my ISP is Spectrum. So they give me, when my modem turns on, uh, this is this is the IP that they give my router. <clears throat> so that's a this is a really inclusive, really well laid out uh, GUI of all the panes. Then up here we have our tests. So the connection test is a is basically it's just a graphical interface of the of, of the command line pane is what it comes down to. So as you can see, there's my uh, domain name server, my gateway again, those IP addresses that are that are at my uh, wireless router. Uh, it's a, there's your ping command right there, 505, two, two milliseconds of latency. Uh, that's internal to the network, so that's a, that's a decent speed. <clears throat> and then our uh, domain name server lookup. So it uses google.com as the domain name and it, and it functioned, it passed. So the, the domain name server uh, was able to uh, translate uh, google.com to that IP address and then of course, that makes the, the internet reachable. If you'll notice, this IP address here is the same as the one at google.com. And then if you'll notice right here, the 29 milliseconds. Okay, so because that's reaching out across the internet, it's going to be longer than the internal ping of, my, of the IP address at my router. So clearly it makes sense. If this number here within your internal ping is higher than your external ping, then you've got a problem within your network. So that's a good... That's a good uh, a good test to take a look at. Speed test, we're all familiar with speedtest.net. This is, in this case, they use an external link to take you out to ookla speedtest.net. Um, that's a tool that I'm sure we've all used at one point or another. 
And then there's another external link that takes you out to Ookla's pingtest.net. However, due to the improvements that have been made with speedtest.net, Ookla has decided to do away with the pingtest.net. And as you can see, this particular web app has been uh, discontinued. So moving over to our polling. Okay, so polling, the default setting for polling, what that means is every time that the uh, screen refreshes is in the default setting on that is every five seconds. So you have an option of one through five in single digit intervals or 10 second or three second, 30 second uh, intervals. Uh, the only time I think you'd ever use refresh now is if you had set it up for 30 second intervals and you wanted to refresh it before the next 30 second interval. Then of course, once you, once you refresh, then you can, you can also stop pulling and start pulling again. What that all this does is it allow you to uh, refresh your polling without going into settings and actually changing the settings again. And we'll cover that right now. So under settings, you have your settings for your uh, for overall. So your selected adapter is in this case is my uh, my wireless AC adapter, PCIe adapter. Uh, I also have a Bluetooth adapter, and I also have a, obviously a wired NIC adapter. Um, but this, as you can see, this is the only wireless adapter I have. Some devices do have two or three. Uh, display units, in this case, uh, this, is your, this is your signal level, and these are dBs. I think the dBs probably are more accurate than your percentages, because those, that is the other option. So you have the option of either decibels or percents. Sweep radar, again, uh, with that gimmick pane, um, it looks cool, and that's about it. Sonar is just a ring that goes out, just like you'd see with a, a submarine or a boat, or there's none at all. It's just a, it's just a gimmicky thing that they put on there. Not very, not very useful, but it looks cool. Uh, locate sound. So I tried using the locate sound. I wasn't really impressed with it. Uh, pretty much the interval in between each sound. It's supposed to increase uh, the interval as you walk away from your device and then uh, shorten the interval in between the locate sounds as you walk closer to your uh, wireless access point or your uh, wireless router. I didn't really hear or hear any difference as I got closer to my uh, wireless access point. And then... Like I discussed in the earlier uh, under polling here, uh, there's your polling interview interval. It's set at five seconds. You have an option of one through five at one second intervals, or you can do a 10 second or a 30 second interval on your polling. Then you have export networks. So export networks is a really nice tool to have. What that does is, as you can see, it brings up, um, it puts it in uh, CSV um, uh, format, which is a uh, Excel, uh, spreadsheet format that uh, gives you the opportunity to export this network pane only. So everything that would be in this network pane shows up in an Excel format, an Excel spreadsheet formatable uh, .csv file or comma separated value file. And then it gives you the opportunity to manipulate and sort and do all sorts of stuff with the data, depending on what you want to do with it in Excel. So that's that's actually a nice little nice little feature right here. And the help. I found help to be actually really useful. Uh, so the user's guide is embedded right in the software. When you install the software, it puts it in into the software uh, folder structure. Um, and basically, it's it's a it's a pretty solid user guide. It pretty much has everything that I've just talked about um, uh, in in this tutorial. Uh, it shows all the features, what's new, uh, system requirements, how to install it, and then of course operating it and the different layouts and that kind of thing. But it's, it's very useful, especially for a new user. The glossary, although short, it's, uh, it's, it's also very useful. Uh, just it gives you the ability to remind you of some of the, some of the terminology and some of the uh, acronyms that are used, such as PSK, pre-shared key, kind of jogs your memory as to what it's used for, that sort of thing. Although it's not very long, like I said, it is, it, I, find it, I found it to be fairly useful. And then, of course, last but not least, you have your about. Um, Pretty much every software on Windows has has the about uh, icon, and all that does is provide you the uh, software version, copyrights, uh, legal information, that sort of stuff. And of course, as you can see on here, it provides a uh, email address for any feedback for using the software. Again, this is free software, so uh, any any feedback that they would uh, that they could get is always useful, because typically with free software, they use it as a uh, as a test ground for. Uh, you know, purchase, purchase software and that sort of thing. So, but that is pretty much it when it comes to um, the Wi-Fi, uh, Xeris Wi-Fi inspector. 
I found it to be a very useful tool. I enjoy using it, and I probably will find myself using it uh, in the future as well as I grow my uh, Wi-Fi network throughout my house. So with that, uh, thank you very much for joining me, and I hope you all have a good day.